everyone. I'm Megan McCarthy, editor of Africa Print. Thank you for joining us. Printing SA has a great deal to celebrate, including 110 years of representing the industry, as well as the introduction of six new benefits and services that will add value to members' businesses. So just some house rules. If you have any questions for the panelists, please post these in the Q&A section. Uh, all webinar attendees will receive 110 minutes of free consulting, as well as a celebratory birthday gift. T's and C's do apply. Also remember to please complete the polls. There is a giveaway for those of you who do complete these polls. So I'd like to welcome and introduce our panelists. They are online. They just need to access their videos. Um, there's Abisha Katerere, Marketing Manager and BBBEE Specialist. Jermaine Nyker, the KwaZulu Natal Regional Chamber Manager, Kenneth Lead, National Training and Development Director, and Kanye Ntanzi, the Commercial and Technical Manager. Unfortunately, Auri and Daniel won't be joining us due to medical reasons. Um, so, Abisha, before we get into the questions, please can you give us a brief breakdown in terms of the new member benefits Printing SA will be offering in celebration of its 110th anniversary? Hi, good morning, Megan, and um, good morning to our audience. Um, but sorry, I was saying thank you once again to Practical Publishing, Sign Africa and Africa Print um, for hosting this platform. Um, look, we're, we're very proud to be one of um, you know, the, the longest serving um, federations in the country, um, you know, celebrating our 120 years this year. And, you know, Printing SA has been hard at work in, in the past year, um, given that 2020, um, I suppose, gave us a lot of time to really um, get involved in seeing how can we add, you know, additional value to, to our membership base. And, you know, hopefully some of the, the the partnerships that we have forged in the last 12 months, um, you know, will we'll bring about that you know, new dynamic, you know, that, that new energy that, that hopefully will inspire existing members as well as attract new members to, you know, join the Federation. So if I can just, you know, run through them. Um, Printing SA last year in August um, signed a partnership and sponsorship agreement with Health Squared and Agility. Um, some... Um, may, may recall that um, in years gone by, the industry um, healthcare provider was um, known as Spectramed, and um, Spectramed in the last three to four years, um, you know, went through a rebranding and name change and became, you know, Health Squared. So they've really, you know, gone out of their way to do a lot of research in terms of specifically what are the nuances for the sector um, that they should look to accommodate when developing healthcare packages. And um, some of you might have been part of the, the two webinar sessions we did with them last year and early this year, which were focused on mental health and wellness, as well as um, you know, well, uh, um, self-awareness self and, and well-being. And they've actually designed a one-of-a-kind medical offering, um, not only for yourself as an individual, but for your staff as well. So, you know, they've got some corporate offerings um, or, or companies offerings, as well as individuals from your companies can also look um, to access those benefits. And like I say, they are tailored specifically to the industry. And um, I, I know as Printing SA, um, quite, a, quite a, a large number of our staff are, are members of um, Health Square. Um, then most recently, we, we partnered up with um, Productivity SA. Um, a lot of you would know Productivity SA as, as a, a, a well-known brand in, in the space of um, um, competitiveness and improvement services. And what we have done with Productivity SA is they've come on board with us. Um, they've been given 120 million rand from the UIF. Now, this grant is, is targeted at um, companies that want to look at improving competitiveness within our sector and you want to compete against international competitors as well as within the inter, um, domestic markets. So at the first selling grant, when you don't actually get the, the funding, but there are three tiers of funding. So 
and um, we've got here at least 20 or more um, employees in the organization. So I think um, 120 is about 262,000 rand worth of services that you can access from there. Thereafter, it's incremental. I think it goes up to 20 to um, 80 is um, 400,000, and then 80 and above is about 600,000. So this is actually geared towards our members during this COVID time who I find it quite challenging to, to trade, um, as well as not only companies that are looking for business turnaround um, and process improvement, but you know, if you've noticed that the company's bottom line has been on the decline for you know, the last few years consecutively, um, you also have access to this facility. So we encourage our members um, to make contact with us, walk we'll in touch with Productivity SA, and um, you know you you will get access to these services. Furthermore, um, most well, not even most recently, Saswin has been a member of CPSA for a number of years um, as an associate member. Uh, as you know, Saswin um, is, is, is Bank, uh, um, part of Saswin Holdings, and they are offering specialist financial products and services for um, our member companies, um, which include you know finance. Um, there's also a, a revolving tech facility um, that deals with um, working capital, and it is capped at 2 million rand. So this is for any five organization. And, you know, we believe that, you know, Saswin has really um, transformed over the, over the years in offering um, their facilities to not only those, com those individuals or companies that are high net worth individuals, but also looking at really down to you know, SMMEs and businesses that are looking to break into the market. We have uh, partnered with Landlogix, um, which is an IT services provider, where they will um, be offering our members um, discounts for hardware and software products. So we're talking specifically HP, Dell, and Apple products. And um, they are also deal with Microsoft 365. So if you need you know, maintenance, um, uh, you know, services from them, they, they are more than willing you know, to assist us. And like I say, you know, they are going to be um, offering our members, you know, quite a, a heavily reduced rate, you know, for all of these offerings. Um, we have also partnered with a company called KBC. Now, KBC has got a um, virtual safety officer platform, um, and this is specifically targeted and designed for SA members that don't have the resources to manage their occupational health and safety requirements. So what this entails is things like gap audits, um, key file maintenance. It looks at incident investigation. It looks at risk assessment. It looks at safety policies um, and a whole lot more. So we believe this is going to be a game changer because um, a lot of our smaller members, which make up at least 75% of our membership base, are smaller companies that might not have that function um, within their organization. And we've now provided them with a platform that they can literally plug and play into and ensure that they comply um, with the health and safety regulations and legislations of, of the country. Last but not least, um, one of the most exciting features, um, and uh, Megan, I don't know if you would allow me to share my screen quickly. Um, I would like yes. to I'd like to share with um, our audience the new and improved printing essay um, website. Now, this website um, is, is forever evolving, but you will see that you know, if you visited this website in the past um, year or two, that it's, it's gone through a great transformation. So there's a lot of information there. We've added in a find a printer tab where one is able to um, go on there and look for one of our members. So you have to be a member to be listed in our directory. And depending on what you are looking for as the person who has actually gone into this function, you'll be able to search for a member, either by name, if you know who they are, or by location in terms of which chamber that they're located in, as well as by what products and services that they offer and connect with them and obviously run through whatever your requirement is, your RFP, your RFQ, et cetera. So like I say, this platform is available for printing SA members that are currently in good standing. 
and we encourage um, all our members to go onto their members portal, update their details so that they can feature on the site. Um, again, it's additional advertising and marketing for our members, so which we never had before in the past. Um, if I can also go to the careers, um, you'll see that our careers page um, we've created specifically because during COVID, we realized that some of our members' employees would possibly um, be retrenched um, or would be um, you know, changing their employment conditions for whatever reason. So we've created a portal on our website where our members can actually advertise the jobs that they have available. So this would be um, available to members that have listed the jobs on their jobs portal. Um, sorry, as Murphy's Law would have it, um, something always goes wrong when you live on a platform, as well as for employees that are looking for employment. So um, if you have employees that are going to be retrenched within your organizations, please direct them to the platform. They can upload their CVs, and then those CVs will sit on the back end of our system um, where our members have got direct access, um, and they're able to obviously look at um, who's available and you know check their qualifications and CVs. Um, just for interest sake, currently we've got 180 CVs on the portal that uh, members can go through and see if there's any viable candidates. But um, if you can see my dashboard at the moment, um, this is what the members portal actually looks like. Now, as a member of Printing Essay, you'll enjoy all of these features. Um, you'll enjoy marketing materials. So we've got some goodies there for you, such as, you know, new logos. So if you're currently not carrying the printing essay logo as part of your stationery, um, or if you need pamphlets or infographics, um, we encourage you to please extract them from the portal. We've got research reports, uh, research and reports. So over the past two years, we've conducted some really high level technical um, industry specific reports. Um, ourselves, as well as um, other associations, as well as FESPA, who are affiliated to, have got research on there. So if you're looking for trends, if you're looking for statistics, um, you know, which might help you refine your, your business strategy or plan, that's the place to go. There's presentations that we have done, which sit there. There's also documentation in the, in the, by way of templates um, that we've created. So obviously during COVID, there were things like policies that companies needed to have in place. Um, that we did templates for. So you could literally just take it and paste it on your letterhead and you were good to go. But there are various other templates on the portal, such as employment contracts, um, arbitration and mediation agreements, um, copy, um, how to guides, um, you know, which really do assist you know, our smaller members. On um, whether this is the left or the right hand side of my screen, I'm not too sure. You'll see once again that there's the CV pool and then we've got tenders and RFPs. So we have gone out on behalf of our members to literally mine tender portals and extract relevant tenders for the sector that we represent, which is printing, packaging, signage and visual communications. So you'll see that currently there's 10 open tenders, which is for branding, for signage, for printing, um, newspapers and magazines graphic design and printing. Um, and we will be updating this data bank on a daily basis. What we've also done is gone um, an extra step and that is to be able to notify members when you know, there is something on the portal that they need to actually go on there and access to be able to download. So we've taken out the fact that you guys need to troll sites and mind them yourselves, we're doing it for you and helping you with a little bit of extra convenience. Um, that being said, Megan, sorry, one other feature I um, did not highlight, which um, Ken would really um, give me a hard time about if I didn't do this today. Um, we've done extensive work on, on our training. So the training page is, is really something that um, has gone through a, a facelift. And all of the courses that we offer as, as Printing Essay are listed um, on our website. So one is able to go on there and pick a course that they want to do. For instance, right now, um, you know, we are really looking at people to sign up for the Adobe um, Creative and Blended Learning. So you would simply click on that course. It would show you what the course actually costs, what the outcomes are, who is targeted at, 
what the duration is, a brief course description, as well as all of the modules um, that are associated with um, that, that suite. Um, I'm not gonna go too much into, um, into detail with this, but I thought, let me just give people a feel, a look and feel and essence of um, you know, what they are to expect you know, when they go onto our website. Um, and that being said, I, I suppose, Megan, um, those are some of the things that we've been working on. As Printing and Say, we continue to look for opportunities to work with partners, work with our members to enhance the member user experience, um, to, to enhance the benefits. And, you know, I suppose we're always open to suggestions. We're always looking to see, you know, how can we add more value to our members? And I think one of the core questions is exactly that. So, you know, I encourage our participants to look at that and um, please give us your feedback because through your feedback is how we were able to, you know, sit here and um, in our 110th year um, offer, you know, the industry something that is, you know, really exciting and I think very dynamic um, in terms of what we've done before as Printing SA. So that's, that's yeah, that's it for me in a nutshell, Megan. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Abisha. Um, so, Ken, just going back to the training, how has Printing SA adapted to the changing landscape in how they offer training? Yeah, well, Megan, you, you, you'd have to go back to, to March last year when uh, we were faced with the, the, the break with lockdown and at the time we were uh, presenting all our training courses face to face. So we had, uh, for example, our foundational learning program where we had 80 learners attending classes at our regional training centers around the country. Um, so, you know, that was devastating. That was a massive project that we had embarked on. Um, but we were able to very quickly adapt and to, to, to launch the foundational learning program again in August um, <clears throat> online by Google Classrooms. Uh, it was also in that same year in, in June where we partnered with FESPA uh, to take our color management course and convert that into an e-learning course, uh, which was which we piloted uh, basically internationally because it was we had over 90 learners with 20 of them coming from the UK. So it was really awesome. Um, so I think we, we've now have the ability, we've adapted, we can present all our classes online now. Um, for example, our technical theoretical modules for apprentices, we're currently running our TT1, which is the first year subjects for, for apprentices in the printing, packaging and signage industry. And we're doing what we call a dual system. So what we have is the apprentices attending their generic classes like business studies and material technology on a Thursday, so they've got two three-hour sessions on, on, on Thursdays and 14 such sessions during a five-month period. And then they do their trade theory for, for four hours on a Friday. Again, also four, 14 sessions like that. And we believe that this is an, a, a really improved model. I don't know why we didn't do it years ago, where we were able to better integrate uh, the theory with the practice, with the workplace experiential training. So. That's how we've, we've, we've really metamorphosized, I guess, and, and have changed into, into an organization that can be pretty nimble in terms of, of, of changing and switching from an online to a face-to-face -face and whatever suits our member companies best. Great. And then what would you say is your edge when it comes to offering training versus competitors in the industry? I suppose, Megan, in a nutshell, I could say that our edge is that is, is the quality of our learning material. And we're the only training provider in this sector who have invested as much as we have in the total redesign, the total redevelopment of all our courses. Now, you saw Abisha scanning through the courses that we have on, on our website. Uh, we have training prospectuses that now that, that, that show the broad range of training that we are, have now on offer from introductionary type courses to, to for newcomers in the, in the industry, uh, including this new foundational learning program, which is CETA supported and, and forms part of a whole new range of programs that we are creating to create these, these learning pathways. So we've got these introductory courses, we've got technical courses, yes, a big focus on technical courses. And we also have a whole range and growing range of administrative type programs as well. 
So we believe that these new programs and, and a whole range of new short learning programs that we're launching this year, that they uh, and, and others that we plan for development over the next two years will create learning pathways uh, of all the occupations that we find in the printing, packaging, signage and visual communications industry. And uh, if you let me share my screen, um, yes. I could just illustrate that very quickly. Okay, let's select that one. I hope that you can see that. Yes. Uh, can you see it? All right. Yes. So if, if we, oops, if we go there, so we talk about from ABIT to MD. So, so essentially what we're doing is the foundational learning program that we see down here, which is a five month program where we take newcomers to the industry through English, through maths, through work-life orientation programs, through occupational health and safety programs, through a brand new introduction to the, to the industry program. And then they do internships. So we place them in member companies. And I'm sure Jermaine's gonna talk about some of the successes that our chambers have had in placing these learners as interns, how some of our chambers have actually, like our Northern Chamber, have already got jobs for 19 of these learners that they've just graduated. Um, so from there, they would go on their pathways and you can see the National Qualifications Framework alignment here, where we have part qualifications, like for example, uh, the plate maker programs that we're launching this year for Flexo and for Litho uh, and the plate mounter all form part of the pre-press side of the occupational qualifications and programs that we are launching. The printing programs the same, the packaging, the print finishing, and we have a whole new breed of non-technical programs that are being, uh, being developed. All of these trades have team leader programs and that's one of the programs we're launching this year and we've just learned of great news from the CETA where we have a whole lot of grants available for members to, to, to enjoy. So every single one of the short learning programs we're launching this year, we can, we can give away 20 seats. That's five for chamber, for, per chamber. So members out there, get hold of your, your, your um, chamber managers now to, to try and book your seats. We basically giving them away on a buy one, get one free type basis. So, uh, you know, a lot of, lot of you know, it, it, it's really heartening to see how, um, how the CETA have, have, have embraced Printing SA uh, in, in this regard. I'm struggling now to get, oh, stop here, all right. It helps when you've got two screens, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. Awesome. Thank you, um, Ken. So I just want to remind our attendees so long, um, our poll is live. I see some of you are participating already. So please do take our polls. And um, there will be a give giveaway for those who take our polls. And of course, the question and, um, and answer session um, section is always open. Please type in your questions. Here's your opportunity to speak to um, some printing essay representatives and, and ask them um, about the new member benefits and whatever else is um, on your mind. So um, with that, besides training, printing essay also assists with industrial relations. So Jermaine, what does an industrial relations consultant do and what are the main aspects of industrial relations? Thanks, Megan. You know, as sure as you are to have a staff member, you are as sure to have labor relations issues. And, you know, the, the role of a labor relations consultant then becomes critical to your businesses. You know, we do have a lot of chances out there, if I can use that term, where businesses try to sort of wiggle their way around labor relations issues. But it's, it's not as simple as you think it is if you don't know the law well enough and if you don't have any or much experience under your belt. So basically, the role of a labor relations consultant ranges very broadly in dealing with labor-related and industrial-related issues in the workplace specifically. And that very specifically pertains to personnel and human resources that we deal with on a daily basis, uh, which most businesses uh, would have. So the title, if you look at industrial relations consultant, sometimes you know it may, it may be very you know, not familiar or unfamiliar, maybe like a foreign term to many, but it's, it's really very simple where these consultants are specialized, skilled and seasoned professionals that, you know, deal with labor issues on a daily basis. Some of the areas in which these professionals will cover typically include the chairing of disciplinary inquiries, 
um, they initiate disciplinary inquiries, counseling, conducting investigations and in evidence gathering uh, representations at CCMA, bargaining with statutory counsel uh, with regards to conciliations, arbitrations, eliminates, um, representation at labor court, uh, the section 189 consultations and section 189A facilitations. Um, it goes on to handling short time, drafting of legal documents, wage negotiations, um, mutual separation agreements and voluntary severance packages. And, you know, the list can go on. But these are just some of the main areas uh, that is covered under the labor relations consulting umbrella. Typically, there would probably be further detailed roles and tasks that stem from these mainstreams of labor relations. Uh, if I can add a little bit about printing essay in terms of labor relations consulting. Um, we are probably most renowned in the industry for our sound labor relations consulting and service offering. Uh, we've been providing sound advice and consulting expertise uh, in the field or in this field to many businesses over the years. So, you know, if you look at Printing Essay over the years, we've invested a great deal of pride, time, and our dedication to our labor relations services to the extent that we've broadened our skills pool of labor experts and increased our basket of services uh, significantly. And this was all done to further enhance our labor relations service offering. So typically each chamber of printing essay that is in the Western Cape, in KwaZulu-Natal, in Midrand, which is our central chamber in Pretoria, uh, would all host a labor consultant. And in, in addition to those labor consultants that we host uh, or, or we have in-house, we also have a strong uh, external network of legal experts that consult for and on behalf of printing essay. So you know, over the years, we've placed much emphasis in developing, uh, developing and expanding our labor relations consulting. And likewise, we've built a wealthy bank of resources that have been refined over a period of time. Uh, and that is done to be of a, or to provide high quality used uh, services or high quality services to, to provide uh, or accurately meet the needs of our members. A key differentiator, if I may end off on this note, uh, to our labor relations services as, as, printing, as printing essay is that we use industry experts and they have a well-rounded knowledge of consulting within the industry for many years. And this is obviously a great vantage point when dealing with labor matters as these experts understand the industry conditions, uh, the climate, the jargon, and the operations. And, the, and it's these small nuances that we in touch with that makes all of the difference when it comes to labor consulting. Um, I'll stop there, Megan. Great. And then um, chairing hearings is something that Printing Essay does quite regularly. Have you seen a trend of any specific matters since the onset of COVID? And why do you think that is? You know, Megan, if we go back to when we were in the hard lockdown and then, you know, businesses were allowed to resume back to operations, you, you know, oddly enough, there weren't too much of uh, disciplinary inquiries that we dealt with at that point. And I think there's a few factors that attribute to that um, occurrence. And that is number one, you know, a lot of the staff were not at work and there were a lot of businesses that were closed down. And for those that were at work, I think a lot of them started to place a lot more value on their jobs more than ever at that uh, juncture. You know, looking at, you know, if you look at a typical scenario to have lots of people at home or, or a certain home, they may be, some of them that work in the printing industry and some of them out of the printing or packaging industry or signage for that matter. And they would have then seen how one part of their home was suffering as opposed to the other part that had a job. And I think, you know, a lot of them were starting to see uh, value in their job from that perspective. But when businesses start to, started to open, even then there wasn't, you know, a particular trend that we've picked up, but there was a vague trend with matters relating to employees refusing to report to duty. And that specific uh, instance is where, you know, the employer was allowed to open work uh, or the businesses because they were formed part of essential services. And then, you know, they had all of the COVID-19 compliance uh, in place and they had all of the, the COVID-19 uh, um, sort of uh, protocols that they needed to observe in place, but staff, was were a, a lot i would say apprehensive because they were very it was very uncertain times and it was un, uncharted uh, territories for many people and for many businesses at that point 
And that was one uh, um, case that we had to deal with, you know, a few cases like that where employees didn't want to attend work, but we had to make sure, and, and here's where we drew the line, is that if the employer was allowed to operate during that period, and if the employer had all of the COVID-19 uh, protocols in place, and the employee had no reason or comorbidities to stay away from work, uh, you know, we dealt with it accordingly where the employee needed to be at work. And if it was the contrary, then we dealt with it the opposite way. And the other case was uh, absenteeism without leave. Uh, but, you know, even these cases were by and, by and large few in number. However, in recent, time, we start, in recent times, we started to see a little bit of a surge in labor matters that are coming in. And there's no particular trend, but I would say that our numbers as printing essay or, or labor queries that have been coming into printing essay have picked up. So in hindsight, if I may end off here, COVID-19 has taught a lot of employees some valuable lessons in regards to the importance of their job, no matter the magnitude of their portfolio. And I think that has caught, uh, well, attributed much to uh, the suppression of a lot of the labor relations matters. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Jermaine. So I'm just going to go to an audience question. Um, Abisha, I just want to do, um, Kevin and Fatima are interested in finding out the cost of joining Printing SA. Would you rather, um, can you address this now? Would you rather contact them directly? Um, hi, Megan. Thanks. Sorry. Um, before uh, I saw that the commentary was my sound was bad. Can you hear me um, clearly? Yes. I can hear okay, um, to answer the first question regarding the cost of joining Printing SA, look, we're very transparent. Remember, we're a non-profit company. So if you go on the website, you'll be able to click on the membership tab. And on that tab, you'll be able to find our membership price list, both for members, as sorry, both for full members, which are the printers, as well as for the um, associate members, which are the suppliers in the industry. There are that you, you will see there. Um, oh, sorry, um, Abisha, you just cut off a bit there. You were, you were going on about the portal and members and non-members. Oh, yes, um, I was saying that the um, pricing structure is on the portal under the membership tab. So you will see two pricing structures, one for members, sorry, one for full members, which are the printers, and one for associate members, um, which are the suppliers of the industry. Our pricing model is based on the total number of skilled employees um, as, as well as other employees. So the full breakdown, um, you would find that. Um, sorry, the other question, Megan? Um, then Mohammed is asking, could you expand on the funding that Printing SA has secured and how members can get value from this? Okay, so in, in terms of the funding, um, as I mentioned earlier, um, we've partnered up with, with SASFIN, and SASFIN has now got a full transactional banking suite. So this includes payroll, it includes invoicing functions if they're not already in place, um, and also access to um, zero accounting, um, which has got a, a very attractive and competitive fee structure. Remember, everything that we, we have done in terms of partnerships ensure that our members get you know, that benefit, whether or not it's in terms of a reduced cost or a discount, um, you know, it's, it's factored into that. From a funding point of view, um, they also offer asset finance. Um, they've got a revolving credit facility. They've got um, a full forex platform. So if you want to buy or sell forex, um, you'll be able to deal with them as well as trade finance. Um, so in... In, in a nutshell, um, I, I, I suppose one would, would literally have to um, sit with the assessment consultant. We're more than happy to, to put anybody interested in to understand the full range of, of products and, and the benefits from funding um, that Tasman offers. Um, and so, like I said, we've, we've done a deal to get things um, at a preferential rate. So um, I guarantee that um, you know, a member can compare apples with apples and, and see that, um, you know, they're actually getting quite a good deal. Great. So thank you so much. Um, Kenny, I'm going to pass over to you. So in terms of regulation, uh, regulations and legislation seem to be changing all the time. And we often see printing essays sending out communication on these matters. 
How does Printing SA manage to keep abreast of all these changes? Uh, thank you, Vivian, and good morning, everyone, and happy 110 anniversary. To answer your question, Megan, yeah, Printing SA is a recognized official mouthpiece of Printing Federation and a representative of a wider membership across all provinces. So we get consultants by government when they intend to regulate our sector. During these engagements, we normally realize that the way policy has been drafted may have unintended consequences to the sector. And you find that the way the policy applies, it, they've used developed countries' policies and conditions. When applied locally, it may have devastating effects due to our local conditions. And since we are a developing country, it will affect the industry in an, a very negative way. And during these uh, discussions, we try by all means that we mitigate those effects. For an example, in 2016 and uh, last year, August, a regulation proposing to declare certain printing activities as control emitters we submitted that based on our market research, consultation with the printing industry, we've used technical studies, legal analysis, and information available at that, at, to date, the regulation in its current form will impose excessive economic impact and, uh, on the printing industry without achieving significant uh, improvement in air quality, human health, and well being. And again, we also closely work with other prominent uh, recognized bodies and collaborate um, and list support governance to come up with policy positions which are more beneficial to our members that is informed by sustainability. We collated with the um, Copyright Bill Act with the coalition, which is, includes a lot of uh, organizations. And at the moment, the bill now is back at parliament. So it will be deliberated, making sure that it won't affect members and the sector in a negative way. We also work closely with other prominent uh, bodies to make sure that those effects are, are, are minimized. We regularly check online platforms where government publish these notices, laws, regulations to, to, or to, to keep our members informed and uh, compliant. At the moment, we have a Copy Act protection of personal information that is coming into effect uh, 1 July this year. Make, the members must make sure that they comply with the Act, that the information that they collect and uh, store is in place at that time. And again, with the extended producer responsibility, the registrations on 5 May will be starting until 5 November 2021. So members, we normally send those to communication. If there's something that you don't understand, <clears throat> please try to make sure to, uh, to ask those questions. We'll engage with you and directly to the correct uh, channels. And a plea again to our members, when you receive these communications, I know it's, it's very tempting to delete without even checking the content. Please don't. When, <laughs> when, when we, the comment is requested input, please respond as your input assist us and give us a mandate to respond and act on certain issues. If it's a research, also give us uh, your overview because the validity of the research is important and the efficacy in that uh, respect. Thank you, Nika. Thanks, Penny. So um, Printing SA is the custodian of Print Secure. Can you explain what that is and why members or non-members should consider becoming accredited? Thank you, Megan, for that question. Um, print Secure is a security printing standard and accreditation board controlled by Printing SA. It is a service that is offered to all South Africa security printers to address the need for improved brand protection, authentication, tracking of secure products to do increase in document and product intellectual property, piracy and fraud. And this accreditation applies to printers supplying general security products, such as uh, certificates, ballot papers, event tickets, scratch cards, examination paper, including government uh, documents and many more. And uh, to maintain uh, this standard, it requires an annual accreditation inspection to ensure ongoing 
risk assessment and quality control in those, uh, those organizations. And the question again, why members and non-members should be accredited is very important because PrintSecure provides printers clients with confidence and security of dealing with uh, certified printers who are, who've been accredited to international aligned standards. I'll stop there. Thank you so much, Kanye. Um, so Jermaine, let's go back to you. Um, how does Printing SA assist its members to manage the multilateral and tripartite relationships between the employer, the state, and the employee? Thanks, Megan. So, you know, over the years, we've come to understand the dynamics around the relationship uh, between trade unions and businesses. And, you know, as we all may concur, there's a bit of stigma that lingers on this topic. And this is mostly attributed to trade unions stepping out of its original intent which was to, I might add, protect and advance the interests of employees in the workplace. So to understand this whole concept, you know, most unions or trade unions are independent of any employer. However, the key point is that trade unions should try to develop close working relationships with employers. And this is where things have, have relatively gone a bit skew. The relationship between unions and employers have become so strained uh, because of a failure to be somewhat understanding of both sides of the spectrum which is number one, to understand the economic climate that businesses operate within. And on the other end, you know, the socio socioeconomic position of employees. With that being the premise of, you know, my, of my response to this question, Printing SA has worked on addressing this issue by engaging, and, or engaging with and forging a relationship with SATU, which is the South African uh, typographical union, which is one of the uh, pioneering uh, unions of this industry. So with, with SATU, we regularly sit around the table uh, to bring understanding around the needs of our members and also to understand their plight as a union. After all, you know, we can all concur that it is a two-way street. And since the inception of our engagements, our efforts uh, have been to ensure th that the original intent of a trade union in the workplace is promoted, and that is to enhance uh, also a, an harmonious you know, with that being said, Megan, we cannot boast that all has been achieved or all has gone our way. Uh, but, you know, what we can say is that as a federation, we've been able to achieve much and set in motion some initiatives, well, some initiatives after doing some solid groundwork. And, you know, as part of promoting the interests of our members, as well as creating a harmonious relationship between the employer and the employee, we've been able to discuss and bring to the attention of the union some of the issues that members have brought forward to us. Uh, we were also able to engage in industry research projects together uh, that would obviously benefit members as well as the well-being of the industry. And we've also, you know, took the time to understand our industry from a labor pers uh, perspective uh, better through the research that we've done. Uh, we're also working with SATU on some new projects uh, that will be of great benefit for the industry at large. And we ask members, you know, to watch that space. You know, once again, I must stress that we're not there yet. And, you know, you will find every now and then that between the employer, the employee and the trade union that you will find some issues. But Printing SA is steadily working towards improving that relationship so that each party understands their roles and understands, you know, the climates and the positions of those of the, the parties to this tripartite relationship. Some of our other multilateral and tripartite involvements include, you know, our relationship with the FPNM CETA. And this, of course, I know Ken Lead has been very instrumental with, and I know that our CEO uh, sits on that board, uh, you know, which benefits employees, employers, and printing essays involved in facilitating that process. So basically, these are some of the ways in which we seek to assist members from a tripartite and bilateral uh, relationship perspective. Great. And then um, we have seen a sharp increase in Section 189, short time and reduced salaries across the board. What are some of the solutions that Printing SA has prescribed to its members to overcome some of these factors? Mm -hmm. Megan, with the hard hitting, uh, hitting impact of COVID-19, we've seen many members embark on small and large scale retrenchments, salary cuts, even short time measures, uh, you know, and all of this done in, in the plight of salvaging their businesses. Whilst this was a tough period of terrain to charter through, I think we understood the plight from our members. Uh, Printing SA consultants had been actively engaging with all our members nationally to advise them 
uh, on how to go about the necessary processes. And in, in, you know, in, uh, in the process, we made use of electronic mediums to conduct our consulting. But you know, there, there were times when we needed to get into our vehicle and go to a, uh, to a plant to deal with these issues. The advice that we consistently provided our members with was to first use you know, the TERS funding uh, whilst it was available and this was offered by the UIF. And this was you know, in lieu of, or, or instead of rather retrenching or initiating short time and salary cuts. This was with the hope, and we told them to use this, with, with the hope that business would improve by them and it will buy them a bit of time. But we also realized that this will only last uh, for a you know, defined period of time. It wasn't long before the lockdown was extended with the various levels that followed. Um, and then we would need to go back to the legal processes in terms of labor legislation that we were to follow. As Printing SA, we've all, always maintained pro providing sound advice uh, to our members and you know, strictly following procedural steps in accordance with the Labor Relations Act when we dealt with retrenchments. So essentially, we, we always knew that substantively there would, they would exist reason to retrench to implement short time and salary cuts. But what we needed to do as printing SA was to ensure that procedurally mem members did it correct. Um, and this is the approach that we had taken with members. Of course, there were issues with uh, trade unions where they challenged some of the decisions made by employers. But you know, as seasoned labor consultants as we are, we engaged with the unions, we were able to enjoy a win and uh, we were sound, uh, you know, and we were able to enjoy that win because of our sound labor relations advice. You know, in bringing this question to a close, we advise whoever is going under Section 189 processes or similar um, processes to pursue any, or, or if they're pursuing any labor related matters, to adhere to the law without deviation. And also, in addition to that, you know, they need to use and, and they should be using well experienced labor consultants when embarking on these processes. You know, these processes can sometimes be a little bit more complex than what the law says on face value. And this is where an experienced labor consultant uh, who's been through you know, the mill will come through and show their experience through these processes. They're always able, you know, these labor consultants are always able to uh, bring to the table various solutions and techniques to handle the technical and un uncomfortable situations. Often businesses have substantively fair reasons when embarking on retrenchments, but you know, they, they come at a loss when they are to follow procedure. So you know, uh, to end off, I would say that it also adds a lot more credence when you use an independent party to preside over your proceedings. And these are some of the ways in which we've been helping members and how we can add value to the labor processes. Great. Um, so Abisha, just briefly, what is Printing SA doing to assist its members to navigate the pandemic, given that some businesses have closed or are facing closure? Hi, Megan. Um, thanks for that. Um, I think, you know, Jermaine has, has touched on, on some of those um, um, critical aspects. And, you know, I'd, I'd like to say that, you know, in 2020, we, we worked tirelessly um, to ensure that the members were kept abreast of new regulations um, that were implemented as a, result, as a result of the new Disaster Management Act, which I don't think we had ever heard of. Um, so it was a, a new territory for all of us. And, you know, what we did was we were offering real-time updates and amendments and would decipher these regulations in order to provide members with the simplified interpretations um, and uh, that allowed them to get a succinct and precise understanding of what was required in order to comply. So some of the things that we did, um, you know, included things like FAQs on those regulations, which are still accessible now, um, because we are still in a, in a state of, of lockdown to a degree, um, being at level one, which means regulations still apply. So if our members want to see what those FAQs are, they can access them through the members portal once again. Um, we hosted a total of six webinars last year, one of which, in fact, one of the very first ones was on how to thrive during COVID-19 um, with you know, an industry um, focus in terms of putting our industries while being at the spotlight. So it wasn't generic in terms of you know, looking at you know, the country as a whole. We, we literally assessed 
in terms of our industry and all of the different processes and functions that our members play, you know, what should they be looking to do in terms of, you know, staying afloat during that time? Um, I've just gone through the, the six new member benefits, which is something that our members can currently now access, um, be it the, the, the reduced or discounted cost of hardware and software, um, the business turnaround and recovery um, facility, the credit facilities for working capital through our partners. So those are, those are real tangible things that you know, members can enjoy now. Um, I must also say that you know, our team was offering free advisory to members um, that had pressing matters which needed urgent attention. Um, and it was at any time of the day. I, I know my colleagues um, you know, on occasion would be getting phone calls on a Sunday after Cod Blanche, which I think is at um, you know, 7.30 in the evening um, or eight o'clock. So you know, it just goes to show you the level of commitment that, that we have and, and the passion that we have for you know, our members. Currently, one of the things that um, we, we are looking to, to negotiate with our members is, is looking at their, their membership fees and seeing how can we arrange a suitable payment um, you know, term uh, because you know, we know that cash flow is, is something that is really tight for everybody. Um, now, I'm not encouraging it because remember, I did mention that we are a nonprofit. Um, but, you know, like I said, we've got really small members. And, you know, sometimes, um, you know, they, they really get stuck, but they still need um, to access our services. So, you know, we are offering, you know, that, uh, that the ability for our members to communicate with your regional chamber um, managers and, and see how we could structure, you know, something, you know, for you to ensure that you remain a member of Printing SA as well as continue to enjoy, um, you know, the, the services and benefits that we offer. Thanks, Meg. Okay, Bishan, while I've got you on, we just got a question from James Kelly. Um, in a declining industry accelerated by the pandemic, how do we as a collective promote the benefits of print and printed products? Oh, great question there, James. Um, <laughs> And I think, you know, I'll also open it up to my colleagues if you want to chime in here. But I think, um, in essence, you know, we, we need to look at our sector um, and no longer and just look at the term print. Because, I mean, what does it actually mean? You know, if, if I look at the, the, the term print, I think the word limits us in terms of, of scope. Because what, we, what it really means is, um, you know, purely just the output. It's what comes out at the end of the process. Um, what we really need to start doing is looking at our industry in terms of it being um, turnkey or end to end. So we're looking at trying to encourage our members to do various things, which is collaborate more um, with each other, look for partnerships, look for new service lines, look for, look for new um, markets to penetrate. And if you need us to assist you, we are there. Um, I think we've got a direct line to Messe Dusseldorf, which is um, part of the South African German Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Um, you know, companies need to start including things like software and hardware um, as, as a service offering as, as opposed to, again, just the, the finished product. Um, the industry has evolved and, you know, there's always this term that the, the printing industry is dying. Um, it, it, in my mind view, the industry is not dying, it's consistently evolving and it's got a huge creative and, and technological um, um, innovation potential. So, you know, I don't know if I, I, I answered James's question. I think it's, it's quite a, a broad sort of um, question um, and I'm happy to debate it with him. And I, I also see that, um, you know, there's been debate around this question on, on the, on the um, chat. And collectively as an industry, remember Printing Essay is a federation that looks after, you know, some aspects of the industry. But if we, we don't have the magic pill that you know, tells you, okay, now go and do this in order to thrive in, in these markets, um, we look to create those platforms in collaboration with our members so that we can drive certain agendas on their behalf that might make the playing field a little easier to um, navigate, um, if that makes any sense. But James, thanks for that. Um, yeah. I'm gonna get you back. That was a doozy. <laughs> Yes, Ken, you you're welcome to add your. I'm not disagreeing with 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 my colleague Adisha, but what I am 
also thanking James and, and, and Mo and Chantal and, and others for, for, for sparking this conversation because we are uh, or have been deliberating with, with, with government uh, to develop a, a, an industry master plan. And part of this master plan is really to, to, to tag on with what you, everyone is saying, what Abisha has said, is that that industry master plan will need to relook and rethink the, the let's say, the print sector value chain, uh, because we're not just print. Uh, uh, print is evolving, print is in, print is in the air. It is, it, as, as Mo was saying, it's, it's, uh, it's a, a, a dot on a page is equal to a dot on a screen. So um, we need that, we need to reposition our sector in the eyes of government and the eyes of, 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 of the print buyers, the, the guys who do uh, advertising and uh, marketing and communication. So it, it's really, really an important thing. We need to put printing, packaging, visual communications and signage back on the map. Uh, we are having advanced discussions with the Minister of Communications to try and see what we can do, for example, to, to, to rescue the postal services uh, in, in this country. So there's an enormous amount of uh, work happening in the background and we need to speak about that. We need to engage with, with the James Kellys of this world and, and others to, 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 to get them roped in, to get them to buy into this whole concept and to add value to the, to the discussion. So it, it's really is welcome, thank you. Thanks James for your question. Um, so Ken, going back to you just briefly, how do you determine what training courses to develop for the industry? It's an interesting question because uh, a lot of people will say Ken decided what we trained, but that's, it's, it's not the truth. Uh, because we've, we've part, over years we've partnered with the, uh, the FPNM CETA but we also now partner with other um, departments that fall under the Department of Higher Education and Training, namely uh, the Quality Council for Trades and Occupations. And they have regulated processes to develop qualifications. Now, as part of that regulated process, we have to establish what is known as a community of expert practitioners. And these expert practitioners are drawn from the sector uh, and they, would, would, would need to inform uh, the processes to develop these qualifications. Thus far, we've developed 12 trade qualifications. These are new. Uh, our existing trades are not registered qualifications. So it's an important move to have these as registered qualifications that will turn and become uh, learnerships, which is also important for those organizations that are wanting to score there be points along the way as well. But what's really important and something I'd like, I've been trying for years is to create these career pathways. You'll know I spoke earlier about the from the ABET to the MD. But those 12 trade qualifications incorporate 26 other occupational, what they call part qualifications. And a lot of those will be learnerships in their own right. So if I can quickly share my screen, I'll give you an example of one but there are hosts of them. So if you can just help me by telling me when you can see that, it'd be great. Yeah, we can see it. All right, so from, from this, this is the sheet fed lithographer. Uh, this is registered, the new qualification is registered on, on the NQF as an NQF level four qualification. You'll know I spoke of the foundational learning program, which is the start of all our new trade qualifications. But you'll see an off-ramp here. This off-ramp is for the Sheet Fed Lithographer's Assistant, which isn't just a new skills program that we're launching this year, which it is, by the way. And it is something that the CETA is funding this year as well. So get to your chambers and get your grants and, 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 and enjoy and convert your and, and give recognition to your Sheet Fed Lithographer's Assistants by taking them through the, 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 the theory modules, the practical modules, and the workplace experience modules of all these integrated programs that we're, we're, we're launching. But the pathway continues. So the mode of training is changing completely from the old apprenticeship systems into these new learning pathways. Ending up with the team leader program that you heard me talking about earlier uh, that we are launching this year. So it's all everything that we're doing, all these learning programs that we're doing are what I call future proofed and ready uh, for as soon as software registers these 
as uh, qualifications so that they can be converted into learnerships. It's, it's really an exciting uh, time where we, we're taking all the good work that we've done and um, giving it to industry, essentially giving it because of the grants that we've, we've received from the FPNM CETA. Um, another part of, the, of, of what and how do we identify what we train is our regional chambers uh, play an active role in this. They, they listen. They listen to our members and they, they, they ask questions regarding their training needs. We've actually also held formal scoping sessions with the Quality Council to establish exactly what those priority skills are for the sector. And it's from those sessions that we derive the, uh, the qualifications that we or the courses that we are offering. And again, I'll have to punt at the fact that we've got over 3 million rands worth of grants to give industry. Uh, in the following programs. And I rattle them off. Anybody's welcome to come and chat to us afterwards. You can go onto our website, as Abisha showed, that all the training that I'm talking about is here and watch the press for details. Follow us on, 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 uh, on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. This is regularly punted. So the team leader program, uh, the Adobe Creative Cloud blended e-learning, Mohammed Yogi's in, in, in the audience. He's uh, partnering with Printing SA in the development of these brand new blended e-learning programs for all the uh, uh, Adobe Creative Cloud Essentials, Intermediate and Advanced courses. Photoshop Essentials starts in April. Uh, so we need, we need to get uh, these grants given away and people need to be enrolled in these courses. InDesign starts in May, Illustrator in June. This is all designed for, for the printing and packaging industry. This is not an off the shelf product really really great so then we've we've, we've partnered with with organizations like midcom uh to 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 help with the development and design of our digital die cutting increasing uh, program it's a skills program so it's got knowledge skills and experience that launches in april our cotton die cutting increasing also launches toward the end of april our cotton folding and gluing machine operator training launches in may the sheet fed litho assistant that i spoke about just just a short while ago also starts in may we're rerunning our color management e-learning program internationally in June. It's just happened in, in, in Finland now. We've had a whole bunch of people uh, uh, attending the program uh, through our connections with FESPA. Then the, in quick succession, the Flexo Plate Maker and the Flexo Plate Mounter in August, our Lato Plate Maker and Saddle Stitching uh, program in September, and in October and November are adhesive binding and real stand operators. So those are all the brand spanking new skills programs that align to all these career pathways that we are developing. And then finally, uh, Megan, the were those priority courses that have been identified by industry during our QCTO scoping session, we will be developing brand new qualifications. And James, you'll be happy to hear this, that the commercial digital printer program is going to be an occupational qualification. So it will lead to a formal qualification that we'll be developing during, we're starting that development this year, along with the sales representative, that's the printing and packaging industry sales representative, print cost estimator, laminating uh, uh, operator that's in the flexible packaging industry, as well as the roll label uh, printing technician. So exciting times indeed. Thanks, Ken. And then just uh, briefly, what would you advise your members to look out for when planning and choosing their training interventions? I think the succinct, succinct answer there is, is speak to us. Uh, I, I would say that our regional chamber managers would, would be their first port of call. Uh, so if they're a member in the central chamber, get hold of Elry. If you're in Pretoria, get hold of, of, of Lana. KZN, get hold of Jermaine or in the Cape, get hold of Danielle. They have professional staff in the regions, and these the staff are, as I would put it, really able and willing to assist them with their workplace skills planning. They do, they'll help them with annual training reports, they'll help them with their mandatory and discretionary grant applications, and even learner registration. So there really is a massive resource in, in, in our regional chambers. But training and development, myself and Michelle Abers are, are also there. We work closely with the chambers and we're just a team's call away from anyone who'd like to engage 
and have further discussions regarding their training needs. Um, but I'd also ask, you know, we have produced a, a really nice uh, a, a training prospectus of 2021 that gives you all the detail that anyone would want to know about the courses that we run. But as Avisha said, that's available on our website, uh, which was also a great resource to members as, as he's been showing us and uh, like us on Facebook and, and, and Instagram. Uh, we're, we also have a presence on LinkedIn. So uh, I think, that, yeah, speak to us. And right. if we don't Thank you so it, much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. So um, just Jermaine, just uh, if you can answer as succinctly as possible. Um, Printing SA has developed the foundational learning program, which had recently run for the second time and come to an end at the end of February. How has this program proved to be a notable success for not just Printing SA, but also member companies? Yeah, Megan, thanks for that. Um, Ken Lee was one of the you know, key persons responsible for developing these programs. And I think he, he put together this program. In my opinion, um, I've seen Printing SA do a lot of programs or, or develop a lot of programs to address grassroots issues of uh, the industry. And I think this program, in my opinion, has been one of the most successful program that Printing SA has, has put together and rolled out into the industry. I remember running this program two years ago, and in KZN, I had all my learners placed in a business. So this program is designed, obviously, to develop the generic skills for the printing industry. And I'll give you a testament of how fantastic this program was. I had put 18 learners in the industry who had no experience, who were uh, unemployed, who had, had nothing, blank canvases, basically. We trained them for five months put them in the industry. Of those 18 learners, 13 of them were permanently employed and six of them currently are on their way to becoming qualified artisans. They are registered as apprentices. I'll even go as far as to say that some of these employees or well, learners that are currently employed, businesses went through retrenchments, but departmental managers were actually fighting over who gets to have these learners um, in their departments. So this program has become a, a dream for HR managers, uh, production managers, and, and you know all of them in the same sphere because it has addressed all of the issues that they couldn't address through their induction programs, through their in-house training programs. Printing SA took care of this and created a, a wonderful succession pipeline or, or just at the inception of the succession pipeline or talent pipeline for them as a business. Thank you so much. And then um, Abisha, how has Printing Essays philosophy evolved now that you are celebrating 110 years as the voice of the industry? Yeah, look, uh, Megan, I think um, for, for any organization to, to have come this far um, is, is no small feat. Um, so, you know, our predecessors were, were obviously um, quite attuned to, to what was required at the time, hence, and, and, you know, our hats off to our members that, you know, have been with us. I think we, we did an analysis, or we're currently doing an analysis of how long our members have been with us. And I believe we've actually got a member who's been, who's still a member today, and they're entering their 106th year with us. So that's a company that's been around for that long, which is absolutely impressive. Um, and for the mere fact that they've stuck with printing SA for that long is also, you know, I think we need to clap hands for ourselves as well, because I suppose um, it's about value. But um, as we've seen over the past three or four years um, with the, the, the sort of um, real fast tracking of 4IR, now 5IR IR in, in certain respects, um, we've had to evolve. Um, and our evolution as, as or our our Morphosis, um, in my view, takes two key things into takes two things into light. The first one being our relevance. So our philosophy has changed in terms of our relevance, where I believe that um, our relevance to our members in ensuring that we are abreast of the unique organizational and market dynamics, so that we're in a position to assist them should they come across any challenges. Hence, Ken um, and Jermaine have both mentioned that please speak to us because nine times out of 10, we've got a, a, a cost-effective solution for whatever you're going through as, as a company. Um, 
Secondly, our relevance to the industry. And obviously, you know, we are continuing continuing to learn and develop our internal skill set so that we're in tune with the technical and business and socioeconomical trends locally as well as globally, which we achieve through um, you know, associations like FESPA, like World Print Forum, like Two Sides, and many other organizations that our members enjoy membership of vicariously through us as Printing SA. So we, we are bringing international best practice into back into you know, the country and we're, we're sharing that knowledge with our members. Um, you know, like I've, I've, I've touched on, on the relevance aspect, which, which is quite key to, to how we continue to, to become, a, to be a sustainable federation, you know, for the well-being of the industry. Then secondly, I'd like to speak about um, attracting the future workforce. Now, um, you know, time and time again, you know, I'm told that I'm still new to the printing industry, only having joined the printing industry in 2018. Um, but, you know, in, in some organizations, you know, going on three years is, is, is not a, a short time. Um, I think if I look around in terms of our entire organization, I'd probably make the top five in terms of longest standing serving employees of Printing SA. Um, but that's not because of the, the fact that we've had a, a high staff turnover. It just goes to show the dynamic shift in how we are looking at the future of, of the industry and the organization. And it demonstrates that it's rare for people from other industries to start working in our sector. But it also proves the need for um, the industry to cast its net wider when looking for new talent. Um, you know, we often encounter members who say, you know what, do you guys have any um, candidates who would fit this position or that position? Because a lot of the industry stalwarts are at the end of their, you know, life cycle in terms of, um, you know, getting to retirement age. And how do we bring in the future work the future workforce to occupy those space. So we need to look at a couple of, of, of things in my opinion, um, which is we need to explore more engaging ways to relate to, to the younger generations. Now you, you look at you know, the, someone who likes sport, for example, are they, are they, for instance, in touch with the fact that the opportunities within our industry um, is things like um, the design of, of the, the advertising that goes around the stadiums, from the tickets to the flyers to the graphics. Um, if we look at the fashion sector, are we appealing to those individuals and saying, look, within the fashion sector, there's fabric printing or textile design? Um, you know, so we, we need to start um, selling ourselves um, in, a, in a very different fashion as opposed to how we used to do it before, because I can almost guarantee you that. Um, if we were to look at, you know, the various avenues within the industry um, where skills are concerned um, and can be deployed, we need to start looking at creativity. We need to start looking at design. We need to start looking at data analytics. We need to start looking at technology. Um, we need to start looking at engineering, business development, customer loyalty, marketing strategies. I mean, for crying out loud, I came from an audit um, background where I was, you know, head of marketing for an auditing firm. Now I know, you know, what lithography, flexography, um, review, you know, all of these interesting and fascinating terminologies are, and you know, and I and I found a home here. So, in a nutshell, um, Megan, uh, I suppose no, no more um, than ever is, is the time now to be part of of a a creative and visual communications technology industry, um, you know, which is I think is going to reshape the future. And if we take that, that sort of view, um, you know, going forward and, and we continue to collaborate and work together as the federation and as the sector and many other subsectors, as Ken mentioned, the value chain earlier, um, then we can really reposition ourselves and, um, you know, drive a new narrative, um, which is that print is not dying. It's just evolving all the time. Thank you. Great. Thank you so yeah. much, Adisha. <laughs> So it's not really a question, but maybe um, it's just a quick observation from Mohammed. He says, um, you know, for Printing USA, are we able to have a chat room for members so that we may engage with fellow members and exchange ideas? Uh, maybe you guys could look at that. Yeah, sure. Um, so um, as I mentioned earlier, the, the, the new and improved website was launched in August uh, 2020. So we've just now finished the first phase of the uh, development. 
We're now going into the second phase of the development. So that's why we say watch this space because there's more to come. And one of the features that we are exploring is to create a members forum, um, you know, through the members portal where members can engage, share ideas, collaborate, um, because, you know, it's, it's essentially what we're trying to drive, um, you know, to, to, to keep, to keep this, this movement going. So yes, Mo, um, we are definitely looking at that as an option. So um, thank you so much. That wraps up our session. Thank you so much to everyone for joining us. Um, you can catch the replay on africaprint.com forward slash live. I'd like to thank our panelists again and thanks again for, to the attendees. Thank you and take care.